Dear colleagues and partners of the Nature Conservancy, my name is Francisca Tondro. I'm the director to Accelerate Impact, and we want to invite you to be part of a system change analysis that focus on environment and people of the Selva Maya and coastal reaches of the Mesoamerican Reef system in Mexico, Belize, and Guatemala, the SMR region that we will call it onwards. We are reaching to you as a key thinker or partner with a unique insight into the environmental, economic, political, and social context in which we work. Our goal is to accelerate collective actions to address threats, challenges, and opportunities that live inside of this human environment ecosystem. This requires a better understanding of the contribution of individual, communities and organizations over the past decades to improve the environment and the well-being of people who call this as a region home. This video explains how we will be gathering the input for our system mapping of the SMR region. A system approach, as you may know, is grounded in the understanding of relationships between people and nature environment and the diverse needs and activities. It requires multiple perspectives and deep collaboration to support flourish natural environment and people's need as aspiration and potential. We look forward to developing a collective pathway that, request, that reflects these diverse contributions, just as like my background, where we hope to reflect all the contributions and all the visions among this uh, incredible SMR region. We are excited to work with Bounce Beyond and follow their methodology for collective ideation and analysis. And we are very grateful for your time and insights. And we are very confident that together we can identify how to set in motion to accelerate meaningful and transformational change to ensure that people and nature thrive in this unique and very complex geography. As a first step, we will ask you to help map the current reality, desired futures and pathways to accelerate our journey to those futures. This video explains the process we're using to do this. We, are, we ask you to respond to a survey that this video is introducing. Thank you very much. Thanks, Francisca. Hello, everyone. I'm Leslie Selford Trask, a member of Bounce Beyond. Other members of our team working with the Nature Conservancy are Steve Waddell, Ian Kendrick, and Johnny Norton. We represent a global community who focus on the co-creation of accelerated pathways for large, complex system transformation. Where are we heading? Well, we are all wishing for that flourishing life for all living beings. Welcome to this part of the video that introduces the three horizon process to systems mapping that we are going to be using and the survey that we would like you to complete as an important part of this systems change initiative. It is clear that we're dealing with a complex system with many aspects interacting all of the time. To help us gain a shared view of this landscape from multiple stakeholders and their perspectives, we use a three horizons process. This is a way of looking at where we are now and where we would like to get to, as well as how we might get there through what we think of as adaptive pathways, a way forward we can adjust as we go. Let's take a quick overview of the three horizons process. When we draw the three horizons, the vertical axis represents alignment with the purpose of the system. Here we explore how the system is meeting the demands, influences, and dynamics that affect the realization of its purpose. The horizontal axis represents time. In our systems work, we tend to look at a 10-year time frame. Here is horizon one. It represents the current system and how it has evolved to meet its purpose. We can see that over time, the system as designed can become increasingly less able to address the complexities, demands, influences, and dynamics, thereby reducing its ability to deliver on its purpose. We call the stance business as usual, as it focuses on keeping things running and delivering on what it sees as essential. Now let's turn to horizon three, the world we envision 
and to which we aspire. This is the world of the visionary, looking past our current world and towards a better future. We can see some small aspects of this visionary future already in our present world. They reveal the principles of our Horizon 3 world now, even though they may be small initiatives away from the mainstream of Horizon 1. Here is our Horizon 2, bringing us out of Horizon 1 towards Horizon 3. This is where transformational catalysts and systems come into focus, starting or working with initiatives that have the potential to lead us to our envisioned Horizon 3 system. We can think of initiatives in Horizon 2 as Horizon 2 minus. They can get captured by Horizon 1 to prolong its life. And then there are Horizon 2 plus initiatives. These are the ones that we feel have the real potential to bring us into our H3 world. Think of a catalyst as an action and or initiative that has transformational potential. H2 initiatives might be thought of as having twin strands of DNA. There are aspects of H1 in them and of H3. We know that these three horizons coexist. They are all present at the same time, whatever their stage of development. This bar represents a small time slice in our journey. The idea here is to show that at this point in time, horizon one is dominant and horizons two and three are forming. How they interact at this stage is important to help the transformation to begin. As this bar moves through time, we can see that the relationship between the three horizons changes. We should bear in mind that the pattern of the three horizons shown here is the ideal one, and all of us know it doesn't always go so smoothly. Now, let's look at our work together. We are looking to build a shared understanding of the Selva Maya and Mesoamerican Reef in Belize, Guatemala, and Mexico. Throughout this video and survey, we refer to the ecosystems and people of the Selva Maya and Mesoamerican Reef as SMMAR. This work is carried out with a view to developing accelerated adaptive pathways to bring about systems change in this region and to identify existing and potential initiatives and actions that will ensure people and nature thrive within the region. This is a collective effort which will involve multiple actors, roles, and approaches in SMR, both within and externally to TNC. The goal for these systemic changes is to accelerate the transformation of SMR to ensure that people and nature thrive. Now we are equally focused on how all parties will work together to create the momentum required to accelerate these systems changes. This three horizons survey and the follow on systems mapping will help inform how TNC will collaborate internally and with other key players in the region. Now let's turn to the survey. For horizon one, we ask three questions. For horizon three, three questions, and in Horizon 2, we ask two questions. Each question is asked twice, once from a country perspective and once from an SMR or whole system perspective. For each of the questions, feel free to answer the country question or the SMR question or both. Both versions of each question are contained in full in the Google survey form. The link for it is at the end of this video. And I can tell you that it is much easier to see it on the survey than it is in explaining it on this screen. Let's now look at the first set of questions with Horizon 1, the current system. The first question is, what do you observe or experience around you that shows that the current SMR ecosystems and its people are under strain or threat? Question two, what do you observe or experience around you in the current SMR system that suggests issues and problems for the ecosystems and its people are increasing? Consider here environmental, economic, social, 
cultural, climatic, political, technological, or other influences. And now in question three, we're asking this, are there any aspects of the current SMR system that you feel must be maintained, carried forward, or even amplified? Again, consider the environment and economic, social, cultural, climatic, political, and technological arenas. Keep in mind, we are not looking to remove Horizon One, rather to transform it, while recognizing that some aspects will be kept even in our Horizon Three. Let's move on to Horizon Three. This is our vision of the future. It is the world that we envision where SMR is flourishing. For our Horizon Three questions, try to imagine that you've just come out of a 10 year time machine where you find yourself observing flourishing ecosystems of nature and people. So in our experience of 2033, what do you observe or experience around you that indicates that SMR system is fulfilling and evolving with the flourishing needs of society and nature as a whole? Still in 2033, what do you observe or experience around you that shows that SMR system is now well aligned with the current and emerging needs of human and nature's well being? Consider here the environmental, economic, social, cultural, climatic, political, technological, or any other influences and factors that you consider vital. Now we're going to step back into today in 2023. What do you observe or experience around you that feels like some aspects of the future SMR system, that is the third horizon future vision we're working towards, are already present? Again, consider the environmental, economic, social, cultural, climatic, political, technological, or any other influences and factors. Let's now take a look at our Horizon 2 questions. This is our transformational journey towards regeneration and alignment with flourishing ecosystems of nature and people as outlined in Horizon 3. Our Horizon 2 questions are, what existing initiatives do you feel could enable and accelerate the transition of the current SMR system out of Horizon 1 and help realize our vision for Horizon 3. And secondly, what new initiatives do you feel need to be started, either within your country or regionally, that would lead the current SMR system out of Horizon 1 and towards Horizon 3? So that's it for the questions. Now, how are we thinking of responding? Well, what you have to imagine is this. Here is the system map that we are going to place your responses on. For each of the questions, we're hoping you can provide three to four responses from your country and or SMR perspectives. If you're answering both perspectives, we're asking if you could keep the total responses per question to around five. However, if you feel that you need to add more additional responses, this is where you do it. Give us the responses that you feel will give us a whole system view, both from the SMR perspective, as well as from your country. Now, and you, as you start to think about how you respond, your answers are going to be placed on virtual post-its. All we need is a topic heading for each response and a very short description. You can see that those post-it notes aren't that big. And so the shorter that you can keep your responses, the more that we can be absolutely succinct with getting your responses onto the board. We know that there has been an enormous amount of work already done in this region regarding systems change. 
And so we would want you to ensure that the wealth of that experience is seen through your responses. If you feel that there needs to be further identification or clarification of a response that you're giving and a link to a document or a website would be useful to give that clarification, please include the link in your response. That way we will ensure that any of the documents or linkages that you're making will in fact appear on the map. Also to keep in mind is that your responses, once they come onto the map, are completely anonymous. So please feel free to, with your candor and forthrightness in terms of how you respond. We will be producing an overall systems map that will have all of your responses on it so that you can see what the full view or spectrum is. And then we start working on how do we work with this together. To help you with sending us your inputs, we have prepared a Google form that has the survey questions and space for your answers. As this video is embedded within the Google form, simply continue through to the survey after you have finished watching this. If you are reviewing the video externally to the Google form, you can follow the link provided on the screen, and it was also sent in the email with this video. So that's it from a Bounce Beyond perspective. Thank you so much for bearing with us in terms of going through these instructions. Steve, Ian, Johnny, and I are looking forward to working with you on seeing these results and looking at all of the input that you are going to provide us so that we can accelerate the pathway to the future for the Selva Maya and the Mesoamerican Reef. Thank you. Back over to you, Francisca. Thank you so much for dedicating your time, energy and insights to help us build a system understanding of Selva Maya and Mesoamerican Reef, their past, present, and future. This work will allow us all to identify system change levers and pathways to accelerate the realization of our goal of protecting and sustaining this region critical important ecosystem and the lives and livelihoods of those who call this region home. We plan to get back to you and other partners and stakeholders to share and revisit this analysis and identify new opportunities for collaboration and future actions to ensure that people and nature thrive in Selva Maya and Mesoamerican Reef. Thank you very much. <laughs>